So Amazon's new device is not going to run Fire OS. Great news because everybody is worried that all of the Amazon devices are slowly going to transition over to the Vega operating system. Now, if you didn't know, Vega runs Linux, which unfortunately means that all of your favorite third party Android applications will no longer run on these Vega based devices. But before anybody panics, Amazon actually proposing that these new Amazon Fire tablet devices are not going to run Fire OS. They're not going to run Vega OS. They're actually going to run a more stock or more native version of Android, which could be great news for everybody because it means you should be able to then sideload your favorite Android or your favorite third party streaming applications. Now, this was reported a few days ago on the Reuters website. As you can see here, it says Amazon looks to ditch their homegrown software for Android in a Fire tablet revamp. It says Amazon plans its first Android powered tablet next year. As you know, currently they will run a flavor of Android, which is highly customized, highly locked down and rebadged as Fire OS. Just like on your Fire Sticks, Fire TV Cubes, these tablets also run a version of Fire OS. But it looks like next year they are planning to move to a more stock, more native version of Android. Big changes to his Amazon Fire tablet lineup following years of escalating gripes from consumers and app developers over the company's homegrown operating system. I mean, they're saying it's the company's homegrown operating system, but in reality, it's just a fork of stock Android, which they've then customized, locked down, stripped out, broken in some cases to make it perfect for your tablets or your streaming devices. So the project is officially known as Kitty Hawk and Amazon plans to release a high end tablet as soon as next year offering the Android operating system software for the first time. Since Amazon is known for having these tablets or generally these streaming devices with fairly low end hardware. So they sell these devices fairly cheaply because they hope to make their money back with the firm's digital content like eBooks, like videos, like music. So they'll give you their devices with the hope that you'll then purchase through the digital ecosystem. But because of that, people looking for more high end, more powerful devices have normally ended up looking elsewhere. And Amazon looked to address that by releasing a more powerful tablet next year. It says if Kitty Hawk is successful, Fire tablets could be more desirable for consumers who crave compatibility with other Android devices, i.e. running a more stock version of Android, plus with the added benefit of having more power at your fingertips. And this could be the start of other devices, other streaming devices being released from Amazon, which cater more for the power user or people looking to get more from their devices. Now, before we continue, let me just quickly share this QR code that if you are looking for a fantastic offer for a ridiculously fast VPN, stay safe online, change your IP address, access geo-locked content, protect your privacy, you definitely want to go ahead and scan this QR code for a superb discount. This was also reported on AFTV News, where we can see that Elias is saying that, that there's been lots of rumors and speculations about Fire TV devices moving away from Fire OS when the next batch of new models is announced. Several reports say that the Fire TVs will run Vega OS, which is the Linux based operating system. But there's also some hints that we've seen that some of these new Fire TV devices will be running a version of Android TV 14. So I really do think that would be great news for everybody because people really are fed up of the base Fire OS operating system. So to have something a bit more alike to Android TV, I think everybody would be happy with that. Do leave me a comment below if you prefer the Android TV operating system or if you're happy with Fire OS. Now here it gets a bit interesting where he's saying that Amazon are discussing a $400 price tag for this new tablet. I mean, I'm not sure people will be up for that. I do appreciate that people want to spend a little bit more money trying to get a more powerful device, but $400 for a tablet based on this, I'm not sure how popular that would actually be. And he goes on to say that Amazon is also planning to release lower price tablets running Vega OS. And this is where I think the market is going to go with Amazon, where they will definitely release the Vega OS onto certain devices. But my guess would be that there will be lower end home automation devices, lower end tablets, and definitely some lower end streaming devices. They may be released with Vega OS. Nothing's going to happen to your existing devices. If your device is running Fire OS at the moment, it's going to stay running Fire OS. There's not going to be some big update over the air converting you from Fire OS over to Vega OS. That's definitely not going to happen. I do believe newer devices will come out either running Android TV 14 or even just sticking with Fire OS. So for the people worried that, you know, is this the end of side loading? Is this the end of third party applications? You've got nothing to worry about. Yes, Vega OS is coming, but it's not going to be pushed onto your current device. And even when Vega OS comes out onto some devices, 
there'll be plenty of other devices from Amazon that you can still purchase, which still allow you to sideload. And if you don't want to stick with Amazon, there are many other devices on the Google TV or the Android TV side that you can purchase. I've recently reviewed the Thompson Streaming Box 240, or you have the On 4K Pro, you have, you have the Xiaomi Mi Box third generation. There are plenty of other devices out there you can purchase today and happily sideload until the distant future. So nothing to worry about. And lastly, just a quick word from one of our partners. If you are looking for the best way to stay safe online, especially in the current climate of you know viruses, malware, devices being hijacked, data being hacked, everybody should be using a VPN because when you use a VPN, you are now no longer using your own IP address. Rather, you are using an IP address provided from your VPN service provider. And with this different IP address, you can then go ahead and unlock different content from around the world. You can unlock the entire Netflix library and really just keep yourself safe online. I've been using this for more than, I think, five years now. I have tried other VPNs during that time. I think I tried Nord for a bit. I tried Surfshark for a bit. I tried Express for a bit. But ultimately, I always come back to IPVanish because it just gives me that consistent performance. It allows me to access all of the applications I want to access and works great on all of my devices because they give you those unlimited connections. So one account, you can install it on 10 Fire Sticks, five laptops, 300 TVs, really as many devices as you like. So that kind of flexibility and that amazing price point, which you can see here for just over $2 a month, it really is a fantastic offer. Using my link does help support the channel. So many thanks for doing that. Do have a look in the video description and pinned comment. You can also take advantage of this free eSIM. So wherever you are in the world, you can now take advantage of this special offer. So lots of great freebies, great price, great performance, works on all of your devices. And again, at this price point, it's definitely worthwhile checking out. So really appreciate your support. Do like and share this video and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.